Hi, I'm Jack Koenig with Graco Industrial Lubrication Equipment, and this is a really simple automatic lubrication system. There are four basic components to any automatic lubrication system. First, you need some sort of a controller. It may be just a basic timer. It may be a more capable controller like the one built into this unit, and it could be a separate unit or it could be built in like we have here. Next, you need a pump. This pump is part of, again, this unit. This is our G3 Max pump assembly. Then you need some sort of a metering device, which the subject of this video is going to be a series progressive divider valve. And then everything else is just kind of lumped into the group of accessories. And this is where it can get a little bit overwhelming and you can get kind of lost in the woods. Some of the accessories used here in this system are a low level switch, which is built into the unit the relief valve which is not an optional accessory but it's still a separate piece so we're going to call it an accessory but this is a safety device that you need to have in every auto lube system a nice optional component is a pressure gauge you don't have to have this but it's really helpful for troubleshooting and then the hoses and fittings are all going to be included in that as well as hard tubing if, if you use that instead and a real common accessory for a divider valve system is some sort of a cycle indicator and this is our solid state proximity switch which is pretty much our go-to cycle indicator right now because with it being solid state there aren't any moving parts so it's really durable and then a wire just to hook that back to the controller which again this controller is built in. Another really common accessory is called a performance indicator and this is something that's unique to the modular series progressive valves. On top is a reset indicator or manual reset indicator or some people like to call this a turkey popper because here as I close this valve to simulate a blockage we're going to see that pin pop out on the front. There's the pin popping out and even when we open the valve to clear the blockage the pin stays extended, so now if you need to come troubleshoot this later and it's only a partial blockage that relieves the pressure itself, the pin is still sticking out. But once the pressure has been vented, you can press that back in to reset it, thus the name manual reset indicator. This type of indicator is called an automatic relief indicator. We're going to close this valve now. There comes the grease being relieved out the front. This type of indicator is a little bit less common, but it's a nice visual indicator if you want the system to keep cycling. Because what's going to happen up here is the whole system will get stopped up and then the proximity switch will give the feedback to your pump or your controller that there is a blockage or some kind of a fault that needs to be investigated. So then that's going to stop the system and force someone to take corrective action. This indicator, however, the automatic relief indicator, will allow the rest of the valve to keep cycling. Like as you can see here, the, the valve has been continuing to run while I've been talking and it just relieves the grease out the front. You can come find the, the grease stuck on the front here as a visual indication that you're having a problem here, but it's not actually going to provide any electronic feedback. So there's pros and cons to each of these, but ultimately they are pretty unique to the series progressive systems because parallel systems do not offer the same type of feedback. So that's a really quick basic overview of a G3 and a Trabon MSP system. Let's take a look at what's going on inside the valves now. Here's a demo unit we like to show off because it shows the insides of the MSP valve. It has a 40T on the top, then a 5T, then another 40T with a cycle pin sticking out the right, and then another 5T at the bottom. So you can kind of see, even from here, the difference in the sizes of the pistons for the different output volumes. Let's hit manual run and watch the pistons move. That first valve has a proximity switch on it, and we can kind of see the light on top. And now the light turns on as the piston moves away from the proximity switch. And you can see only one piston is shifting at each time. So if anything has a blockage, 
that will stop the system and cause it to go into a fault mode if the controller is configured properly. And this again is a very simple system. You could have a valve that would be called either the primary or the master valve that feeds some secondary valves that then go out to the lubrication points and it can get really complicated from there. But the purpose of this video was just a real simple overview of how a series progressive divider valve system works with our G3 pump. If you have any questions about this video or any other subject, please feel free to contact us. We are always happy to hear from you.